My name is Esther Pakis, and I'm a researcher at the University of Glasgow, and I will talk about the psychology of how not to describe plant-based food. So my research team at the University of Glasgow studies desire for food and drinks and the psychological processes that lead to it. And we consistently find that desire results from simulations or re-experiences of previous pleasures. So when people describe tasty foods like crisps, they describe what the food tastes and feels like and where and when you eat it. And when they describe a neutral healthy food like carrots, they describe what it looks like and where it grows. So it seems that people simulate or re-experience eating the tasty food, but not so much the healthy food. These simulations are of sensory experiences, for example, creamy, crunchy, or fragrant. They are simulations of eating context. For example, eating something in the pub, in, at a barbecue, or at a Sunday lunch. And of pleasure and reward, thinking about and really re-experiencing how delicious, warming, or tasty a food is. And we see this in the brain as well. Just looking at attractive food pictures activates the same taste and reward areas in the brain as actually eating the food, and much more than for neutral, healthier food. And these re-experiences, so thinking about what a food or drink tastes and feels like and how rewarding that is, they predict how much people salivate, they predict how much they want to eat or drink a food or drink, and they predict actual consumption. And I suggest that these simulations can help us understand how people think and communicate about food and that they can also be used to make novel foods more attractive. So what does all of this have to do with climate change? Well, as you may know, what we eat has a huge climate impact. And according to most recent estimates, food systems account for 34% of global greenhouse gas emissions. Where do these emissions come from? Mostly from beef. Does it matter whether the cow was raised in Scotland or in Argentina? Not really. Food miles aren't actually really a thing in terms of greenhouse gas emissions. And you see that here, producing 100 grams of protein from beef emits the equivalent of almost 50 kilograms of CO2. So 50 kilograms of CO2 for 100 grams of beef protein. That's huge. That's about 10 times higher than for chicken and 60 times higher than for lentils. So quite obviously, if we want to survive as a civilization, we'll have to change the way we eat in industrialized countries. And eating less beef and more plant-based foods is a really good place to start. But given what we've learned about how desire for food arises in terms of simulations of previous rewarding eating experiences, we should probably not frame these plant-based foods in terms of being vegan, but we should rather present them in terms of social rewarding, fun consumption experiences. But let's first look at how people communicate about meat and about plant-based foods. How are these foods described on social media? Do users tag plant-based foods as appealing? That seems to be important um, if we want to transition to more uh, plant-based diets in the mainstream. So in this study, my brilliant uh, PhD student, Tess David, looked at thousands of Instagram posts and we analyzed the hashtags that users use to tag their posts about meat-based foods, about vegetarian foods, and about plant-based foods. And you would think that on social media, people pick the hashtags that they think will make the post interesting and appealing to other people. And you can see examples here of the posts that people used. You see the sensory words, salty and creamy. You see the eating occasions, for example, birthday with friends and dinner. You see ingredients and also health and identity related words. So we coded these hashtags according to whether they represent consumption or reward features, so sensory words, context words, and hedonic words, such as delicious, or whether the hashtags reflect eating independent features, like simply ingredients or noting health and sustainability related features. And again, this is important because as we've seen, consumption and reward features can increase desire for a food, so it could make a food really appealing to other users. So we conducted two studies and we found very much the same pattern twice. Namely, meat-based posts on Instagram are attacked with more consumption and reward features than plant-based and vegetarian posts. 
Vegetarian and vegan posts, on the other hand, are tagged with more eating independent features than meat-based posts. So it seems really that the meat-based posts are presented in a more appealing way with a strong focus on the actual eating experience, whereas the vegan and vegetarian posts tag other things, for example, ingredients and also health and identity, as we see here. So overall, the meat-based posts have relatively more reward and context language, while the plant-based posts tag vegan identity and health. And you can see uh, that nicely in some examples here from the top hashtags used for these two categories. For the meat-based posts, you see hashtags like dinner, Sunday, and delicious come up, but um, not so much for the vegan posts where it's more about vegan life, healthy, um, and what vegans eat. So more about categories and identity, helping to find other vegans basically, but not really emphasizing the rewarding experiences of eating the food. We then did the same analysis for supermarket ready meals. We looked at the descriptions of these ready meals in UK supermarkets, and we analyzed the words used in these descriptions, again, testing whether they refer to eating simulations or whether they are eating independent. And we see the same pattern here. Meat-based meals were described more with eating simulation words. Um, for example, um, basically this, uh, talking about the sensory experiences, about the context where you would eat it and about how delicious it is, then the meat-free meals. And the meat-free meals, so the vegan and vegetarian meals, had more eating independent language about ingredients, food categories, and what the food looks like. Do these differences matter? Well, we tested this experimentally by showing participants descriptions of 40 different plant-based and meat-based foods. And the descriptions either focused on ingredients, category information, and visual aspects, such as this one, burger patty with rice based on soy protein, cabbage, and beetroot pieces, or with descriptions designed to trigger these simulations, these re-experiences of enjoying a food. So focusing on sensory aspects, on reward, and on the social context. For example, a pup favorite burger with soft soy, crispy cabbage, aromatic rice, and deliciously sweet beetroot. We then measured for all of these descriptions for the different foods, how attractive people found these foods and how much they simulated or thought about what it would feel like to eat them. And as predicted, we see here that eating simulation descriptions increase eating simulations. So thinking about what it feels like to eat a food and they increase attractiveness. And separate analyses showed that this is especially pronounced among more habitual meat eaters. So more habitual meat eaters were more swayed in their preferences when the descriptions really focused on rewarding eating experiences for the plant-based foods. So yes, using appealing language, the language that really makes one think of the fun eating experiences of the sensory pleasures to be gained from a food can really help boost the attractiveness of novel plant-based foods. So to briefly sum up, this work has shown that we need a mainstream transition towards more plant-based foods. Food packages and also social media posts use less eating simulation language for these plant-based foods. So less language that really describes the pleasures and the rewards of eating a food, which might make such foods less enticing. On the other hand, describing foods with eating simulation words increases their attractiveness. So this can be a great route to, uh, in, to boost the appeal of plant-based foods, especially as we have seen for habitual meat eaters. So thanks to my wonderful collaborators who helped a lot with this work, um, and of course to, to the funders who also made it possible. Thank you. <music>